I want uh, to request you to allow me to affirm what uh, my colleague Senator has said. Uh, today in Parliament, I'm on record that I asked whether we have any document tabled to declare the level of revenue that we are sitting down to budget because as, 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 as somebody who understands the budgeting process, budgeting process takes care of revenue versus expenditure. Why are we dwelling so much on expenditure and no disclosures are being made on revenue? I asked that question today in Parliament in, in the afternoon and I'm on record. Concerned that there are, there are some non-disclosures that are happening around the revenue area, when you scrutinize the budget proposal and uh, uh, budget uh, making, there are so many uh, discrepancies you can see on figures. I just landed on one page. Like he said, there are many pages. You may not be able to consume every other page with the time allowed, remembering what happened last year. We were only given three days three days to go through the document and pass it. And most of us, because of course we have other uh, assignments, it may not be possible, especially for those who are not very conversant with matters, budget and matters, finan uh, financial discussions. So I flagged off um, uh, vote number 1082, State Department of Medical Services, and I realized that the baseline estimate that was given for 2023-2024 was 66 billion, 394, 280, and some monies on top. The estimates given for 2024, 2025, mm -hmm. which is now the, this year, is 60 billion. So there is a difference of 6 billion. billion. Mm -hmm. That is a figure that is actually contradicting with the, with the line item budget, which is actually now indicated at 45 billion. So what's happening with those figures? Where are they not matching up? Where is the difference figure? Who is supposed to account for that difference? So those, that is what we are calling corruption budgeting. budgeting. And you are supposed to be the, oh, the, the guardrail, is it? I mean, we were talking about money that it's corruption, that that money is going to... Yeah, it, so that it, is... that is public money. Exactly. But, but again, you are privileged as the representative of the people of Gidongori to not only point out art, to not only point that out, but also voice and then see what action can be taken. Definitely. That is why I was asking that question in Parliament so that we can now be allowed to look at the revenues that have been tabled against the budgets, items like this one, so that we know. By the way, how do you, how do you budget for money which you have no clear revenue figure? How do you budget blindly without knowing what is it that you have on the table? It's like asking all your children, 10 children, come to the dining table. We are now going to eat. But you don't even know whether the amount of ugali that you're going to share to these 10 children is, is going to be enough or not enough. So we are doing things blindly. And that is why some of us have been echoing our concern and flagging off some of these is issues. So the budget process in the National Assembly is actually supposed to be as heavy as making a bill into a law. When you're making a law in Parliament, it takes you almost three years. Now, when we assume that this is a two weeks, three weeks affair and engage in a hurry so that we can finalize, we make a lot of goofs. And those are the goofs that later on you hear people going to court saying it was unprocedural, it was irregular. So even as we go through the studying orders and follow the studying orders and do what you're supposed to do as the tradition of parliament, I think it's time for us to review our studying order and give members of parliament time to assimilate and understand the budget proposal, the revenues they are in, and advise accordingly. Okay. And that is why we are having a lot of uh, you know, confusion right. and uh, issues raised. Okay. But I was looking forward to use this platform to actually highlight issues that my voter really doesn't understand. Because what you're talking here is more, more elite. And our voters down there in the villages are not understanding what you're talking about when you talk about billions. Because billion to them is actually a, a figure that they are used to hear, but they don't know what it means. I was looking forward for, for an opportunity in this show to actually break down in the Wandiko's language what this finance proposal, if passed the way it is, will do to their lives. On another platform, I tried to break down the impact of this finance bill to tea farmers. I would have loved 
to get an opportunity to break this to that very Boda Boda guy I saw there on yeah. the television talking about how okay. how he expected the one shilling reduction on fuel levy yeah. affect his business, which he has not seen the results. I hope we will get an opportunity because to me, yeah. as a representative of the people, yes. my work is to actually understand this bill and break it down to them and, and then go to them and ask them for their permission, All right. whether I have their permission yeah. to vote this bill in or to reject.